Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the Dieter Melhorn Fishing Podcast. I hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to the show, or you may be watching it. Uh, many of you are now watching the video version of the podcast on YouTube. So uh, for you folks that are listening out there, that was the original format, traditional podcast on all of the podcast platforms out there. I decided to start doing a video version of it. Um, had a lot of people that just uh, were not into the technology involved in getting a podcast on their phone, which is easier than it's ever been. It's the whole reason I started a podcast because they got it down to a dummy level where I could do it. But um, a lot of people like watching on YouTube. So we do a video version of it also. So either way, uh, you got both of them to choose from. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, anybody that's new, thank you for stopping by. Consider subscribing to the YouTube channel or subscribing to the podcast and uh, getting the regular downloads. We're trying to do one a week. Uh, trying to stay pretty steady with it and uh, trying to bring in some guests, kind of a mix. Uh, it's hard for me to do all guests. Uh, if it was my way, I would do it that way, but uh, it's difficult. So uh, what I try to do is try to mix it up a little bit. Today, I've got a guest. I've got Paula Smith on here, a lady catfish angler. Uh, we're going to talk to her uh, and just get some feedback from her on her world. But first, a little bit of business. Any of you guys who need to reach out to me, send me a message, uh, give me some feedback, uh, go to my website. It's the easiest thing to do. DieterMelhornFishing.com. There's a contact section on there. You can send me an email. You can send me a text message. Uh, and um, that, that's the easiest way to go. There's also links on the website to my guide business and my YouTube channel and the podcast. So depending on how you ended up, wherever you're at watching or listening, you can get to everything through the website. So go check that out. But yeah, uh, I sat down with Paula Smith out at uh, the Catapalooza Fishing Show in Pigeon Forge uh, this past year. And um, we had a good chat. Paula is a lady angler that pursues trophy catfish. And um, the thing that makes her a little different than, there's a lot of women that fish for catfish, don't get me wrong. Uh, but Paula does a big majority of it solo. A lot of times her husband is with her, but a lot of times she's out there solo. Uh, her husband, Ken, who is a retired uh, game warden over in Tennessee, uh, he tags along for the ride most of the time, or some of the time, but he's not into the fishing as much as she is. And uh, he's got her uh, equipped and hooked up and total confidence in everything she's doing. And that's what kind of makes her unique. Listen, I would love to hear some, from some other ladies out there uh, who are fishing solo uh, and, and you know, hitting it by yourself. It's a different ball game for ladies. Uh, no two ways about it. And uh, that's kind of what was interesting about Paul and why I wanted to sit down and talk with her. She's from Western Tennessee. She is as country as a handsaw, country as a dirt road. There is no hide, hiding that at all. And uh, But she's fun to talk to. She's full of energy. Uh, she's really dedicated to the sport. And uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy getting to know a little bit more about Paula Smith. Where did Paula come from? Where'd you grow up at? What's your background? I grew up in a small town called Lobelville. It's in Perry County and Humphreys County. You know, they're side Is by side. Is this Tennessee? Tennessee. Okay. And uh, pretty much that's where... I lived all my life. Well, describe that place to everybody. What was that place like then? Uh, Loboville does did not have a red light. Still doesn't have a red light. Uh, no fast food. Um, we lived in a, on a farm. I grew up a farmer's daughter. Uh, my daddy was disking. I was plowing. Vice versa. Um, Waverly or Humphreys County. We do have a few fast food places now, but. Uh, where Ken and I live is almost identical to where I was raised. You know, it's 160 acres and dead end road, no neighbors. It's perfect. It's it's paradise, heaven on earth. Now, did you have brothers and sisters or just you? I had two brothers. All right. So you you were the girl stuck with the brothers. Right. Were y'all into fishing and hunting and everything then? Uh, yeah, we. Uh, we would go out and build our own little deer stands, you know, the, the three trees. And, you know, we did it, we roughed it. We didn't do it modern day style. 
uh, and then when our little ponds would overflow, we'd go catch the bluegill and the Buffalo River wasn't far from us and we'd sneak off because my mother hates water, she can't swim. And you had to sneak off and then come back till you dried off. So, you know. You kind of had to lie to her that you were down there. Well, no. Uh, you just didn't tell her the whole truth. You came home dry. She knows the truth now. <laughs> Does that sound better? <laughs> that sounds better. <laughs> What's your first memory of fishing? What, reaching back, what's the first time the, you remember? The very first memory of fishing, my dad taught me how to make a cane pole, which, you know, and I'm, te I'm gonna teach my grandsons how, cause I, you know, I want them to know the history of life. But um, we went down to the Buffalo River and uh, of course you can't pull, you can't cast out. You've got so much string and that's it. And I was fishing a little hole. I can remember the root of the tree and I can remember getting a bite and sticking it out till he took it. And I mean, I, he was probably about this big and I was so proud and I probably wouldn't, I probably wouldn't six, seven years old, but my dad, which was my hero, uh, carried it home, cleaned it, and cooked it because you know that was my that was my fish, and that was the only fish we had, you know. But he he did it because he wanted to know that hey, you did something, you did something great, yeah. and uh, I've been hooked ever since. <laughs> what did your hero, your dad, uh, what did he think about your fishing abilities, your outdoor abilities? competing basically against two boys. Were the, were the brothers older or younger than you? Or were I'm you? the baby. Okay. Uh, they were older. What, what, does he, what did he think about your abilities there? And um, he, uh, he knew it was gonna be tough being a girl living out, you know, with no neighbors, that I was gonna be a tomboy. He knew that. Uh, like we'd get off the school bus and fight to get on who's going to drive the tractor you know and ride up and down on the tractor so i mean he was pretty proud he's pretty proud that that i i didn't want to go in i can tell you an instance uh, my mother was working and of course my dad farmed and um uh, we were going to bake a cake or he was going to bake a cake because i i went into the cake baking or the household thing. So we go in, we bake a cake, and the top layer just split in half, and uh, cause we are trying to surprise my mom. So I said, Daddy, what are we gonna do? And he said, how much icing we got? And I said, I don't know, we got about three quarters of a, you know, a thing of icing left. He said, we gonna scotch it up where it'll stick together and nobody will never know it. And that's what we did. We just, you know, stuck it together and it was good to go. Use the ice and like glue to hold everything together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cool. Now, how did uh, Paula go from being a little girl living out in the country to getting a little older? Did you go to school? Did you go to college? What was your little segue into adulthood here leading up to your um, fishing? We, in, um, Perry County, you had different little schools. And then when you got to eighth grade, you had one high school. Mm -hmm. So my middle brother, uh, he was an excellent basketball player. I played basketball. Uh, I was the first girl to play b baseball. You know, I was very competitive because I was raised with brothers, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I went to high school and then I went to Alabama to the University of Alabama nursing school mm -hmm. and uh, come back, got, uh, my father passed away while I was down there and uh, come back, got married and moved to West Tennessee and had my son, which was a blessing and that didn't work out and uh, I'm, my both my brothers passed away mm -hmm. so i needed to get back to my mom because you know mm -hmm. i was the only one left and uh so i moved back to humphreys county to 
watch after her, take care of her. And uh, it went from there. Now were you, during that time period, you're, you're going through high school, you're involved in sports, you're going to uh, Alabama, which I know my son is smiling about because he loves Alabama. Uh, you know, and and I'm, I'm old as dirt. Do you remember when Bear Bryant was the coach? Yes. You remember when he passed away? Right. I was standing on the side of the interstate when his funeral procession come okay. by. I, I, I'm old as dirt. That tells how old I am. But you are a legitimate Alabama fan because you actually went there and you've been with them forever. So we'll give you credit for that. Were you fishing during this whole time period? Or was there like a lull? For a lot of people I hear, you know, you kind of embrace it as a child. You kind of go through young adulthood and, and get, you get away. busy and everything and you get away from uh, it. Yeah. Uh, I was married almost 20 years to my son's dad, and we had, um, in West Tennessee, the water is, the, you don't have rocks, so it's all muddy. So we had a, people call them ponds, but these were lakes, they were huge. We had a catfish pond, or lake, and then we had a crop in bass. So I was fishing all the time. And uh, like our catfish pond, we had monster catfish in that. I'd like to go back now and see what was what's in it. But um, you didn't have you didn't have to go catch brim or bluegill, whatever y'all want to call it. We called them bluegill. Um, you had to figure out what they were eating, and frogs is what they were eating because it's a pond, and that's really basically the only thing they had. So we would catch frogs and put them on our hook and fish. Or we would go over to the crappie and the bass and, and fish there. But I didn't like it as much uh, because it didn't have that fight. You know, I, I'm competitive, I, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like they're from the sports and stuff that you're reading yeah. and having the, the brothers like you did. Yeah, and, and I'm, 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 not, I'm not trying to be smart when I say women can do what men can do because there's lots of things we can't do men do. But being raised with brothers, uh, you know, let's just say I got in a fight with somebody, I'm not going to pull your hair and I'm not going to scratch you or I'm not going to, you know, fuss and fight. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fist fight just because I was raised that way. You know, I got beat up many times by my brothers. Uh, we lived on a gra uh, gravel road and I'd say, can I go with y'all, can I go with y'all? And they'd say, if you'll run down to the bridge and back barefooted, you can go with me or go with us. And I fell for it a zillion times. I'd take <laughs> off wide open and then when I got back to the house, they were gone, you know, but I wanted to be right there with them, you know, because we were in the country, I mean, what else did you have? Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't take nothing for, for the way I was raised. I never heard my parents raise their voice. Now, I ain't saying they didn't fight. They probably went to the barn, had it out, you know, and then come on back. But uh, they were, uh, we had chores. You got off the school bus, you toted wood in, you did your farming. Uh, gardening. I mean, my mama had three gardens, and and we, you know how kids are, brothers and sisters. You foot and fuss and fight, pick a row and start pulling weeds. You know, it was free labor basically. Yeah. <laughs> She'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> well, fast forward to meeting your husband, that guy you're with now. The crazy one? The cra no, I'm kidding. I think he's a great guy. You may call him no, crazy. No, I'm guy. kidding. Ken is a wonderful. How did y'all meet? What's y'all's love story here? Let, let's hear it. Oh, it's Lord. It's always the question I ask on the boat when I has, have a husband and wife together on a guy trip. I always go, what's your love story? How did you meet? Ken's ex-wife was married to my first cousin, and they had two children. Well, both the their parents kind of took off and Ken had those two kids. And I wanted them to know that they had true blood family that loved them. So I contacted Ken and asked if I could come see him. And uh, 
I went out, he said, sure. And I, I went out there, Ken's gonna kill me. I went out there and, uh, and seen him, talked to him, spent time with him. I carried my, I only had one grandson at that time and uh, let him know that, hey, we're, we're the same blood. If you ever need me, you know, I love y'all. You know, you've got family. And uh, I, I start, it was time for me to leave. I mean, I, it wasn't time, but it, I needed to leave, I guess. And uh, I hugged their necks and Ken said, uh, Ken made his move. He said, uh, well, don't I get a hug? And, and I thought, what do you get a hug for? You know, you know what I'm saying? My first thought was, well, what do you get a hug for? You just want a free hug, a squeeze or something. And uh, I give him a hug, and then uh, it just went from there. Uh, I always said it's like I'm the outlaw and he's the law, you know. Literally. 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 Uh, and it went from there, and... Uh, it's been going great. We, our seventh anniversary was last Sunday. Um, of course, he's retired from uh, TWRA now. And for people who are listening to the podcast or watching the video, he was a wildlife officer. Uh, 30 years. 30 years. And uh, how did that play in? Because had you gotten back in the fishing big when you had met him? Or was he somewhat of a catalyst for getting you back to that? I had been, uh, where my mother lived at that time, I had been creek fishing. And uh, then me and Kim would go out and and bass fish or catfish, but we didn't use circle hooks. We, You, you know, when you set, where you had to try to set your hook, not I almost throw myself out of the boat. But uh, he seen how much I loved it. And uh, I was at work one day, and it was winter time, and he called a um, 50 pound cat, it was, well, it was over 50, a uh, blue cat, and uh, he sent me the video, and I said, no, this ain't gonna work. Uh, you know, no, 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 because you're the bass fisherman, I'm the cat fisherman. And we just kind of learned together that, hey, there's circle hooks, there's things have changed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told him, I said, I want to do this. I want to do this 150%. And what you mean by do this is pursuing catfish, right. bigger catfish, trophy catfish. I, I, and... I want to search for monster catfish. And uh, I want to do it on my own. I don't want somebody to do it for me because I am very independent. And a lot of people who don't know you may be listening to podcasts and go, oh yeah, I take my wife fishing. She rides in the boat with me and blah, blah, blah. But you're not that girl that's just along for the ride. And most of the times that we see you out, us that know you, you're, it's you. Yeah. It, it, it's you fishing. You, you, where Ken's at, I have no clue. You don't have I think you leave him in the truck or something. Don't I mean shows up is to take pictures of you asleep in the passenger seat when you're going down the road. But yeah. it sounds like you're really, I ain't gonna say the leading force, but you take the lead in a lot of stuff that's going on with chasing catfish. Uh, the one thing I did ask him to do is teach me how to run this, to drive this boat, mm -hmm. operate this boat correctly. Mm -hmm. And I'm fortunate because he was a TWRA officer mm -hmm. so I was taught correctly mm -hmm. you know not just by Tom Dick or Harry I was taught by an officer that taught classes for driving boats and uh, that's one thing I was one thing I, I can give him credit for he, did he catch you any slack or did he teach you, treat you like one of his students or one of his oh I, I was treated worse than probably any student <laughs> he ever he you know what I mean he was harder on me than he would have been at anybody uh, because he didn't want me to have an accident or, you know, How hurt close somebody. has he come to writing you a ticket for doing something wrong? <laughs> the big log pile. Real close. Uh, he's when, a stickler for the law. I mean, he, he's a true lawman. That's why from, I yeah. say law and outlaw. Um, Ken, if he wrote you a ticket, you'd go eat supper with him that night. He, he's very... Uh, 
he's non-confrontational. Uh, you know, uh, he if he wrote you a ticket, you'd know he wrote it to you because you were doing wrong. But he didn't pull up and be a smarty pants about it. You know, he enjoyed seeing children fishing. You know, and he kind of cut some slack there. Uh, the ticket part on me, uh, my grandson and I was coming back from the creek on the tractor and a rattlesnake was crossing the road and it's against the law to kill a poisonous snake in the state of Tennessee. But I wanted my grandson to hear that noise so he'd know that's danger back away from it. Well, it's got a bucket on the front of the tractor and I was just beating the heck out of that rattlesnake. and. Here comes Ken in the green game warden truck, and he even turned the blue lights on. I mean, we're on a gravel dead end road, and he's got the blue lights on. And uh, he gets out and he says, he's even got his little clipboard with his tickets. Ticket center, yeah. He said, Paula, what are you doing? I said, I'm killing a rattlesnake. And he said, You can't do that. That's against the law. And I said, well, Hayden needs to know that that's danger, and I want him to know that. He said, I'm going to have to write you a ticket. I said, well, I'm going to, I'll tell you what. I said, you go ahead and you write that ticket, and when you write that ticket, you get a check and you sign it, because I'm not paying that ticket. You're paying it. And uh, I said, the judge is going to laugh at our court any room, any, anyway, because it's a female judge, and they probably ain't going to like snakes either. But uh, he didn't write me a ticket, but I was pretty close. Pushing the edge with the man. Yeah, yeah. Now, as a woman in the catfish world, it, it's, there are a lot of women out there fishing. You know, a lot of times you see them in the more elegant forms of fishing, fly fishing and salt water. Catfish is a little more no. blue collar man kind of world physical. Are there some physical limitations that come into play, come into play, you've overcome physically as a woman? Is it tougher? Probably my hardest thing is if I'm fishing alone, uh, if I'm anchoring, getting that anchor up, it's like, my God, I, how much rope did I have out, you know? But other than that, I've got that upper strength. Uh, I just recently bought a mountain bike and I got about 50 yards down the road and turned around went back and I thought, man, I got to build up that lower, you know, mm -hmm. strength. But uh, uh, the bigger the better. Mm -hmm. You know, the further that rod bends, the happier I am. Yeah. Uh, as far as getting them in, sometimes I, I get too anxious and want them in there. Uh, but I'm, I've learned, you know, to enjoy it, let them, you know, tire out. Uh, and I, the probably the biggest challenge if you're alone is I always try when I do set up, get everything where I can, it's in hands rates, you know, the net and so forth. Um, I don't mind, I can throw the cast net, cast my bait. Uh, I don't mind cutting the fish up. I don't mind the slime. I don't mind grabbing the fish by the mouth. And you know, I, that's just me. Um, you and know, it sounds like your early childhood growing up basically conditioned you, readied you, trained you for this type of world. You're not fly fishing on a beautiful river flowing through Montana. Which is a bucket list yeah. of mine. Yeah. Uh, and I work in maintenance. You know, I, I went to nursing school and was a nurse, but when COVID broke out, uh, I just, you know, I, maybe this makes me a, a failure. I, I hope people don't think that, but my mother's all I've got. Mm -hmm. And she's 79 and I'm not ready to, I'm not ready to tell her bye. You know, I didn't want to be, bring something and, take her life and have to live with that. What does she think about this at, at her age and the wisdom she has, I'm sure, that her little girl's out there? She, of course, I, like I said earlier, she's scared of water, she can't swim, so we always had to sneak away. Uh, when she drives by uh, New Johnsonville at the boat ramp or something and I get back and load my boat up, I notice there's a message, a little 
piece of paper on my windshield wiper and I, I know it's her every time, it's a given. And I open it up and says, get off that water, it's dangerous. <laughs> but she's, um, uh, she's proud that, you know, I overcome, losing your family's hard. Mm -hmm. it, it's very hard. And being the baby, you never expected to be the one to have to, especially if you're a girl. Yeah. And um, she's proud that I overcome that and accomplish something that I wanted to do, not something somebody else wanted, you know, something that I really love. And, and I truly love fishing, I mean. Have you encountered any other women out there that are as eat up with it as you are? Obviously there's other women that fish for catfish. Th there's lots of women that, that love to fish. I've never encountered a woman on the river, you know, operating a boat. Because uh, you seem to be consumed by it. I mean, it, it's, it's yeah. you're as eat up with it as I am. Right, I go to work, uh, when it's time to clock out, I got enough time to get on the water, you know, and right now it's a busy time because it's gardening time. I go home, I mow my yard, uh, I get supper done, hook up to the boat, and I go fishing, uh, you know, up until 9 or 10, and then I go home, go to bed, and, and it's hard. It's hard on our marriage because Ken's retired now, and he don't, you know, go with me as much because he doesn't like it as much as I do. I mean, he was on the water for 30 years, you know. Um, Does he worry about you being out there? Mm. No, he, he, he don't, uh, he knows that I've, you know, I mean, I've made mistakes. Uh, before I got my, my catfish boat, I fished out of his bass boat and it was 4th of July weekend and all the game wardens launched at New Johnsonville, you know, to go out to get the drunks off the water. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll just take his bass boat and go fishing. And I went out there, I, I backed that trailer down there perfect, and I unhooked that boat, and I pulled out of there and parked just perfect, and I looked around, and his boats are floating off. So, you know what I mean? You learn as you go. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I hollered at the guy, and I said, could you bring me my boat back? <laughs> And uh, I mean, little things, you just have to, uh, if I had to give other tomboys or other women that love to fish advice, if you truly love it, if you truly, truly love it, don't give up, keep doing it, you know, but you gotta truly love it. You can't like it and then dislike it, you know. I'm so eat up with it that if I go fishing, say all day today and part of the night, when I get home, instead of getting a shower and getting in the bed, I'll go get on the couch after my shower and I'll sit there and my mind is run, replaying what could I have done different? Where did I mess up tonight? Where should I have been? Uh, what were the conditions, you know, that made this different than, you know, them tearing it up the night before? You know, it, my mind never stops. And then I'll get to, then it goes a step further and I start Googling, you know, and start research. I mean, I've got, I've got paperwork in my truck right now because I'm gonna read it tonight at the motel room, you know, that I printed off yesterday morning before I went to work that much of it, and I'll read every bit of it. Plus I've got, you know, I'm going to do that uh, Palomino cat tie thing. And uh, I called him and I said, Kevin, can we not just use a fish hook and some, you know, regular fishing string? And he said, no, that's kind of the twist of it. You know, putting that, uh, uh, what is it, paracord? Yeah, for people that don't know, Kevin uh, Palmetto Cats here on YouTube has a, uh, a knot tying contest, but he has like, it's for visibility, I guess, so people can see it being tied, but he's got like a big giant tuna hook and then like paracord that you tie the knot with. And it's that kinda, you can't even fit through the eye of the it, hook. And your muscle memory from your hands doesn't work the same when you're dealing with something we, big like well, that. Well, it's, it's like a shoestring, except it's yeah. hard. Yeah. 
and you can't get it, you know, if you run it, like say you're doing your snail and you run it through there and you've only got to wrap it five times and then when you got to go back through the eye hole, it's like there's not enough room, you know. But uh, I got it in the mail and that night I sat down and I said, Ken, I want you to get your stopwatch you know, on your cell phone and start it. And when I get done with the knot, say, go for my next knot, because that's how pretty much it's going to go. So you have to do, it's got, first knot is snail knot, second knot is the palomar, and the third knot is clinch knot. So I started, you know, didn't stop, didn't look up, just, you know, me, it's me and that hook in line. And I done it in a minute and 14 seconds. Nice. You know, and I, I was like, wow you know, for my first go at it. Mm -hmm. But the only thing is you can't get, you know how on your fishing line, you gotta get that knot tight, the uh, clinch knot, the palomar. You gotta get that tight. The, the paracord, you can't get it tight because it's, it's so thick. So I, I thought, well, I'm gonna have to call him and see if this is gonna work. Mm -hmm. And he said, it does, as long as you do it right, it doesn't have to have, you know, that tight, perfect look. Yeah. So yeah. I thought, well, all right, I got that whooped. But now I might get on there Sunday night if I get home. I might get on there and, and my mind go blank and think, is this a hook? Or, you know what I'm saying? Which I don't think I will, yeah. as long as I don't pay attention to what everybody's saying or look. Yeah. you know, as long as I keep my mind on that. All right, we're taping this at Catapalooza, first ever, and I've got to do a seminar here at four, which it's right at four, but I want to hit you with one last question, and that's, what do you want your legacy to be in this sport? What do you want to be remembered for? What kind of impact do you want to have on the people that you touch, you reach? How do you want them to read it in the bitter end in 50 years? I want to be remembered as an angler. I want to be remembered for my ability, my skills. You know, yes, I'm a woman, but I want to be remembered as a equal. And, and I'm not equal. You know, I've still got a lot to learn. I've still got a lot further to go. But I want to be remembered as a great angler uh, I want to go down in history, you know. I want my grandsons to grow up and say, and they already do, you know, my Nana's famous, which I'm not famous. But, uh, you know, I've got my own signature series rod, you know, and, and I'll make this quick, but uh, when it come in the mail, my grandsons was there and they were saying, can we have ours? And I said, no, <laughs> you know, y'all's are gonna be put up till you get a little older. But, I took one and went straight to the graveyard and sat down beside my dad and said, I made it, Daddy. Because he knew that I was going to turn out in some shape or form doing something boyish. And I, I literally, I, I sat there and I said, Daddy, I done it. I made it. You know, I done it. I accomplished it. You know, because I had to overcome a lot of people saying, you know, the only reason she's catching fish is her husband's a game warden or, you know, stuff like that. And that's one of the reasons me and Ken don't fish together much is so I don't catch that flack anymore. And uh, that's, I, I want to go down as, um, first of all, a good person. And uh, I want women to know that, hey, you can do it. You, you know, even if you go out there with your husbands, that's okay. But, you know, uh, tie, learn to tie your own hook. Learn to cast that, that, that reel. Uh, learn to take that hook out of the bait, uh, mouth, you know. Learn to handle that fish. Research these fish because they're very interesting. There's so much to know. Um, I don't want to go down, I don't want to go out on the bottom, I want to go out on the top. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I, I won't stop until I get my Tennessee state record and hopefully some more.
Well, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to this podcast. Paula's got a fishing channel on YouTube, Fishing with Paula Smith. Go check it out. Uh, and keep your eye out. You'll see her at some of the uh, upcoming fishing shows. Uh, she's on uh, made guest appearances on several different YouTube channels fishing. And I'm going to get out and fish with her at some point. Uh, her husband, Ken, is somebody that I'm going to sit down and talk to for the podcast. Uh, he is very much into conservation efforts and is trying to help the uh, ACA with some of the things they are doing. I think he has some very good information uh, to share with us. So look for a podcast with him at some point in the future. But until then, we'll catch you out on the water. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. Uh, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.